Do you have a handle on the multiverse, Haley? Do you get it? You know, every time I think I do, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Prepare your ears, humans. Happy, sad, confused begins now. Today on Happy, Sad, Confused, I'm Josh Horowitz, and my guest is the one and only Haley Steinfeld. She's a superhero two times over. She's so greedy that way. Oh, she's a singer. She's an Oscar-nominated actor, and dare I say it, she's just getting started. Somehow she's never done the official Happy, Sad, Confused podcast. We're going to remedy that today, Haley. You ready? Oh my God, let's. Let's do it. Uh, we are talking all things, but um, first and foremost, we're going to get into in a little bit uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I was just gushing. You know it's real because I was gushing to her off camera, like for real. It's an amazing movie. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, before we get into our conversation, I just want to remind the audience watching or listening to the podcast, do the thing, like, subscribe, spread the good word. That's what we do around here. And if you want to catch me do one of these in person, we're going to do one of these in person one of these days, Haley. Uh, I do these in New York in front of an audience. We're going to do one June 8th with the cast of Outlander. Uh, and I'm going to do one June 16th with a, a little known actor named Brian Cranston. I hope things work out for him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Amazing. get your tick get your tickets now info in the show notes and, and Haley, if you need a comp, you know where to come. 100 percent I'll give you a call. Sounds great. I'm excited. <laughs> so um let's talk. Uh Haley, we've been talking for I feel like I've I've had a, a run of talking to actors that I've been talking to since they were like this tall. And you, <laughs> <laughs> like I talked to Elle Fanning and Will Poulter and now you, and it's always great because it's like, wait, I've known these guys for like 12, 15 years. How does this math possible? Um, totally crazy. But but yeah, I mean, uh, I remember you, of course, on the True Grit press train. And when I look back at those conversations, I see someone that was actually like seemingly very like enjoying it, like in a great way. Like, this is awesome. I'm totally. fucking living my best 13, 14 year old life. Is that accurate? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Everything I I had done every place that I'd traveled to, it was all a first. Um, and it was just so wild to be, you know, one asked the same thing quite a few times, uh, but just about my experience. I could talk about that all day long, you know, about the fact that I was able to do what I love and still am. But uh, I think at that time, it all was just so new and wild to me that it was like truly so much fun. <laughs> did, did anything phase you at the time? I mean, Oscar, I was on that Oscar carpet. I saw you there. I was nervous, and yet you did. You seemed cool. Like what? Oh what part God. of what part of that whole trip, that year, phase do you think? I mean, I, I, I guess it sort of depends on um, how you interpret being phased by something. I was certainly, uh, you know, nervous and excited and a little anxious at moments. Um, but again, I guess I, I, I never had any expectations. I uh, had nothing to compare any of it to. Um, but I mean, I remember being on that, that red carpet and just leading up to it, having so many people tell me about it, uh, and, it, and, yeah. and how sort of daunting it might feel or, or, you know, nerve wracking and whatnot. And, you know, you spend the whole morning getting ready and I got ready at this fancy hotel. I like ordered pancakes off the room service menu. It was a big deal. And I, my family was all there. And I remember somebody opening the car door and I just looked down at what looked like this never ending red carpet. I'd never seen anything so huge before. And it, it did feel so just like otherworldly in a sense. It was just, I, I, I couldn't believe that what I had done, what I had had like so much fun doing got me there. Yeah. Um, and it was, it, it did, it's, it's, I think to this day, it definitely feels like the longest carpet and, and maybe the most time I've ever spent on a carpet. Uh, but it was just amazing. I had so many wonderful people around me that whole time, just really showing me the ropes and, and being so lovely and supportive and patient with me through all of it. It must also, if there's that weird phenomenon, right, of like when you're in the middle of something like that, and you've had this a number of times in your career now where you've been a part of something really special and it like everyone like me comes to you and is like, it's amazing. Like you must be feeling amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yes, you probably are. But right. like, we all know like life is complex and it's like, you can be dealing with crap. Who knows? Like whatever right. you're dealing with. And then at the same time, like everyone that's coming up to you is like, this is amazing, isn't it? You must be living the dream. And you're like, yeah. And I'm also dealing with this over here and right. I'm 
and that that's like a constant thing to probably negotiate in your life. Yes. hundred percent. hundred percent. I mean, I think that's, uh, that, that, that goes for most people. I feel like maybe now, especially because of social media too, right? Right. Like we, what you present to the we, world and what you, yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of like misperceptions. Um, and, and a lot of times like we are in control of them. Sometimes we're not, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it, it is a wild, one thing I have realized though, is it, it serves as a great reminder that while I've, I've been in the middle of a press tour or in the middle of a film or something, right. Where I'm experiencing something and or multiple things in my life that aren't so great. Um, somebody coming up to me and saying, this is so amazing is a reminder that like it, it is. Um, and I, I feel, you know, so lucky to, to be able to do what I do. I have the coolest job in the world. I get to do all these, <laughs> uh, you know, I get to experience life in a way that I never ever could have imagined. And I'm still human. I'm still growing up. I'm still figuring myself out. And with that comes a lot of, you know, emotion and, and frustration and anxiety uh, and all the things. Um, but I still, I still get to be reminded, I guess, through those moments of like where I'm at and why I'm there and how I got there. And, and that's not the worst thing in the world. Let's talk a little bit about, before we come to Spider-Verse, um, we talked about this one of the time, I think it was on the Bumblebee press uh, train, because mm -hmm. I, I noticed then and I noticed now, so after True Grit, you don't go right into three different projects. You actually take mm -hmm. a good solid year off. And I'm curious, like, was that was that like a group decision? Because you're a young young woman then, and I would think putting myself, I've never been a young woman, but I've been a young man who's been excited <laughs> about things, that... Um, you want to just like take on the world. Like, wait, I was just Oscar mm -hmm. nominated. Like, give it all, like, let me try it all. Right. It, w from your perspective, were you cool with like taking your time? Did that feel like the right call at the time? Were you turning down things you were iffy about or what? Well, absolutely. I mean, it, the we shot the film and it came out the same year. So it was a, a like nonstop whirlwind for a little over a year. Uh, and I definitely needed a moment after the fact uh I I think I think we all did um it was a lot it was wild it just it, like I said it was non-stop and and again having nothing to compare that to I realized like I hadn't been home in a while um I hadn't seen my family I hadn't slept in my own bed you know and so I definitely needed a moment and I think there was no definitive uh decision as to how much time I needed or how much time right. I was about to take off um that then was sort of determined by making sure that whatever I did next felt right and felt, um, uh, you know, as challenging as, as true grit was and as exciting as, uh, that role was to me. Um, and so a year happened to go by, which each day of, I, I took great advantage of and, and really needed it. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk, take stock now. I think, uh, as we sit here today, you're 26, you, mm -hmm. Let's see, you you basically have two franchise character roles going, at least, mm -hmm. right? Kate Bishop, of course, mm -hmm. and Gwen in the Spider-Verse. Music career keeps growing and growing. Dickinson, I know, an amazing experience. Peabody must be so satisfying. You're an EP. Uh, mm -hmm. The aforementioned mm -hmm. Oscar nomination. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Are you goal driven? Is this like, what, are there, are, is there, is there a list that you are checking off? Like, give me a sense of like, if I talk, we did talk probably five years ago, but if I talked to you five years ago and asked for what you wanted to be doing, is this what it looks like or, or oh is it all God. happenstance or what? You know, it's, it's, it's gotta be a little bit of both. I am very goal driven. Uh, there is certainly a list I have had and have added to of things that I'd love to accomplish in my lifetime. Um, but that said, Five years ago, if you would have asked me, none of this would have been in the cards. I can't believe that, you know, <laughs> things have fallen into place the, the way they have for me. I mean, I think back to a lot of times I think about or I'm asked about like my dream role. Right. And I think about it. I think about it all the time. I watch a movie and I get so excited about that. And I think oh, I need to do that exact thing, just different. Um, but just because I'm like instantly inspired by whatever it is. Uh, and I think back to my first film being True Grit, a Western. I'd never seen a Western before. I didn't even know what that was. Uh, I went from that to doing Shakespeare to then a sci-fi. Again, could have never uh, planned it. I could have never dreamt, uh, you know, for all of this to have gone the way it has. But I find myself so fortunate um, to just mainly have the the privilege of of being trusted to play the roles that I've played. I think they definitely have 
uh, common through lines and similarities and as far as character traits go. And I think a lot of that is these strong minded, uh, opinionated, um, strong willed female characters that, that have a point of view and a bold voice that won't go unheard. And, um, I'm inspired by that. I love that. And they've happened to fall into these crazy worlds and projects that I get to be a part of. That a gajillion people are, are very much also interested in it. So it checks all the boxes. This is good. Yeah, so, exactly. so wait, I'm, so I'm curious, like you say that, like you watch something and you're like, Oh, I want to do that exact thing or it inspires you. Like, so what does that look like? Like, is it, is it a genre? Is it a director? You're like, Oh, I gotta meet, I gotta um, just talk to this person. Like, do, is there an example you can think of, of like something that inspired you and maybe didn't lead to a specific thing, but it was, it, 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 yeah. it, it got your mind firing. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be so random, right? I, I, I recently watched the gentleman, uh, Guy Ritchie and I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah. Guy, it's like, I like to do a Guy Ritchie film. Then it's like, you watch Rooney Mara in the girl with the dragon tattoo. And I'm like, I would do anything, you know, then it's like, I watched <laughs> Like, I'd love to do like a fun buddy comedy type, right. you know what I mean? It just, it's like, right. it's, it's seeing things as a, as a fan and, and being moved by it. And then realizing that I, I get to do that. And, and I would love to do a version of what has moved me. And I think, and not to, this is just a coincidence that this is where, uh, this is what's made me think about what I'm about to say, but like a, a film, like uh, across the spider verse is, is a type of film that like, I wish I had when I was 10. Right. Because I know that if I saw that, I would this that would be the kind of thing that I would say I've got to be a part of something like this I've, because yeah. it's it's so moving. So and again, random and move when I say moves me in, in so many different ways, um, as you can imagine, Girl with Dragon Tattoo makes you feel a little different than Step Brothers. But, <laughs> but no, I would know. imagine it's also <laughs> like it's also about the company you keep and, you know, better than anybody that like from the start. Again, we're going to keep going back to True Grid. It's yeah. always going to be there, but it's like. Deacons, Cone Brothers, Jeff Bridges is like, oh my God, like whether you knew it or not, and you probably knew it to a degree, you were sure. surrounded by the best. And now more right. so than ever, you're like, oh, I want to be in David Fincher's hands. I want to be with Warren Miller. I want to like, just, I want to learn. 100%. That's, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And I, I, yeah, yeah. I, you, you have a conversation about now, now I'm going out of David Fincher I mean, spiral but like yeah 100 that's, that's do you think you would i mean you know the infamous fincher route like the 35 takes are you have you ever had an experience like that where someone like grinds you down like if you're gonna do it do it for fincher because it's gonna turn out in, into art it's gonna be amazing you know i don't i i listen for sure not that right uh there have been I guess I, I could say safely say that over the course of four years, having worked on on this film on Across the Spider Verse, I've probably done about thirty five takes per scene. Uh, but that's not in the moment and live action and right. in real time by David Fincher. Um, <laughs> I, I, I there's something about I think there I'm I, I'm in two minds about that sort of like method, right? I think I've I've definitely experienced a quick a quick turnaround. Coen mm -hmm. Brothers, they do. Not they precious. Little, they just they know they know it when they got it. They just move. I mean, it's like one take, and they'll do one for shits and gigs. You know what I mean? Like wow. it's they they know what they want, and they know when they get it, and they move on. And and you feel confident because they're so confident in it. Um, but I I I love the opportunity to just, I mean, do it do it till it's till you don't know what you're doing anymore. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess the method to his madness, he always says, is he wants the actor to kind of like just be so like they're out of their own head. Right. Yeah. Like they, I mean, it's I, just I, all. I think too. One thing I this is so random, but like one thing I've, uh, I've been so lucky in that I've worked with such generous actors that when it's not their coverage, they still give it all. Um, that can be so exhausting. I've I've learned and I've seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but I also feel like you know there are times where, I, I love to. I I think I may have. And it, it it varies on the situation and the scene, of course, the circumstances. But like, I think maybe I I used to like doing my coverage first because I I it felt uh just the timeline of like the the homework that I did and the yep. the work that I did on it to to doing it it was fresh and you know it, it was no, right there. Sense. But I, yep. I almost like living in it longer now. Um, I think I used to feel like I I worked with a few actors at one point that didn't really like rehearsals. They didn't want too much repetition. They wanted it to feel, you know, spontaneous and fresh and new right on the day. And um, while that also is amazing, and that again is, it, that applies to a lot of, you know, 
that that can be great for a lot of different reasons. I think like living in it, doing your coverage last gives you the time to do just that. By that time, you've done 35 takes. If you've gone sure. around the table um, and you know exactly what what you want to do at that point. I don't know. That was a weird tangent. No, no. it's I, This podcast is all about tangents. It makes me think <laughs> like tangents. Okay. Uh, okay. I always think of, I always think of like the Jack Nicholson story about on A Few Good Men. They like shot, they were shooting all the other stuff and he stayed around for like his sides, right? His, uh, okay. the coverage on crews and everything. And they're like, you don't need, right. you're, you're, you're Jack, you can go back to the trailer. Right. And, right. and, and for him, it was like, I love this. This is what, this is what I, uh, I just like, I just like to act. I just want to be yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I didn't know that story, but that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's part of like, also too, that's what I mean about where having worked with generous actors. I mean, they're like, it, it is easy to just say like, you know, I'll take five and someone yeah. else will step in or whatever. But yeah, that's like, we're there to do one thing and we're there yeah. to like stand that mark and and do that job, you know? Like, yeah, who wants to sit uh, in their trailer endlessly? You're going to do that anyway. Yeah, you might as well do the work. Yeah. As fancy as they make them, there's nothing in there. Like, you know, they're not <laughs> only that so fun. many channels. There's only so many <laughs> streaming services. <laughs> exactly. All right. Yeah, the time so, in the middle of nowhere, too. Got no, seriously. No connection. <laughs> Let's start to get into the, the Marvel side of things. Um, so this movie is so amazing. Uh, the sequel, uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I'm curious, okay, so when this first comes around for the first film and they offer it to you, they they make their intentions known that they want you to play Gwen. Is there any like um, strategic part where you're like, wait, does this give up my live action Marvel eligibility card? Do you have to mm. kind of ask that question in a way? It, it definitely crosses the mind. Uh, but I have learned, if there's one thing I've learned in this whole Marvel Cinematic Universe, it, it is that anything can happen, anything's possible. Um, and here I thought I was doing what couldn't be done, which is playing two characters. Uh, and yes, while one's live action and one is animated, it's still happening and it's still crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it definitely crosses, crosses your mind, but um, I just feel so grateful to be playing any version of this character, let alone the one that I get to play. It's pretty, pretty, pretty damn cool. In watching the 600 previous great Spider-Man films, had you ever like connected and envisioned yourself as Mary Jane or Gwen? Had you kind of connected with either of those characters? Oh, I, surely I've, I've connected and, and resonated in, in ways, but never, never saw myself. Uh, no, I, it, 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 that's the sort of thing that feels like impossible. You know, these films are so, I think, I mean, so grounded and rooted in, in its emotion and in its characters. I think one of the reasons I love Spider-Man so much is because he's just a normal dude. And, you know, he puts on this this suit and becomes this superhuman and, and takes it off. And he's instantly that normal person again and just trying to navigate life as it is. Um, but it still seems so larger than life. And, and so, yeah, I don't know that I ever saw myself doing this. Um, but I, I, I guess you could say I've seen myself in... in some of the characters throughout the 600 uh, iterations of the of the character and the films that we've seen. But Bring them um, on, 600 more, can't get enough. Yeah, exactly. what, how, Okay, so what do they, at the outset, what does this look like? Do they show you art? Do they show you a full script? Because these are, I want to get into the process of these films because it is unusual, right. right? And you you kind of like hinted at it. But on the first one, how was it presented to you? And was it clear, was it easy for you to say yes? Did it make sense? Uh, did they convey what the uh, what they were trying to do here? Uh, as soon as as soon as I heard Lord and Miller, it was a yes. Yeah. Um, there was never a full script. Uh, I actually was asked to just send in a voice note of I think it was literally just a few pages of sides, and of course they weren't like the official. It was made up, uh, and so I sent in this voice note, and uh, before I knew it, I found myself involved in yeah what I didn't really understand for a while. Uh, and I'll never forget having that moment of seeing the first film for the first time and being like, they were right. It makes sense now. I do get it. Um, you know, the whole time throughout, you know, we were lucky if we got a rough sketch or some sort of previs or something. I, 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 both times I was able to see, they did show me my character, um, in her full form once they had it all figured out, uh, which is obviously great and helpful. Um, but this time around, I feel like I got to see more and I definitely had a much better and bigger understanding of what it is we were doing, the story we were telling, the character I was playing, the dynamic between my character and the others. 
uh, far more than I, I could have the first time around. Um, but I guess it just goes to show there is so much beauty in embracing the chaos and and trusting who's around you because if, yep. if you can't do that, then you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, because I mean, the puzzle pieces they have to fit to make this make emotional sense and, and to succeed on the level it succeeds is mind boggling because my sense is you're, you're, I mean, again, you said this earlier, you're recording over and over again, different iterations. Right. At many, and so like, you never get that, that actor experience of mm. the table read from beginning to end of like following a progression of a character. So you must rely on them so much to understand like, oh. where are we in the story now? What's like, oh the universe? What the, what's happening? Oh, yeah, no. And and the, the wild thing too, is because it takes place over so long, we are coming into these sessions from having traveled, uh, having been traveling, having yeah. been caught up in another role and another, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a, yeah. If it were not for these incredible filmmakers and directors, uh, having the innate ability that they do to fully make us feel as though this might as well be live action. Like we are in the moment. This is what's happening. This is why this is, who's there. I mean, it just, I would, there's no way there's no, they, they are there. They are our only sense of, of continuity and consistency. Um, and yeah, I mean, I also think what's so cool is the, the freedom that they have allowed us to have in the booth. Um, even with such perfect writing already, they are like, you know, these characters, you are the character, do what, do with it, what you will to have that, like that trust, uh, is so incredibly rewarding and, and just creatively, I mean, makes you go to another level when you have that. And it's funny, and I promise not every other question is going to go back to True Grip, but it occurs to me Please. that, that I mean, voice is so important to you from the start. When I think back mm -hmm. and I rewatch True Grip, I think of just like the cadence and and, and just like the register of your voice. And now, mm -hmm. obviously, this, the music career, but something like this, knowing the power, you know, that you have to deliver a performance strictly through your intonations, your attitude, and not relying on all of this. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's a challenge, but I, it's something that I, I would think, I don't know, just grows the skill set a bit. 1000%. And I, I hate to admit sometimes, but I, I do feel like I had, uh, I guess we can call them misconceptions of, of voice work and what that nest, like what that entailed before I got into this, because again, yeah, I like it. It, it seems so simple. You go into a booth and you're reading the lines off the thing, you know, right. you get them the day in advance, you're not like. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting in there, you realize in that moment how powerful your voice really is and how powerful it can be to translate through a screen, it, you know, um, or even a set of headphones, right? Like I, I'm, you know, the majority of the time I have my castmates in my ears having, they've already pre-recorded the scenes that I'm in or vice versa. Yeah. So that's great because I like, at least I have that. And, and the thing there is like, I don't know. It it is a wild. Uh, it's it's. It definitely has grown the skill set. I will say, um, and I think going back to True Grit, uh, dialect, dialogue, uh, any sort of like vocal presence has always been a huge um, element in the roles that I've played and and in my you know. In, in every aspect, I think of my life, um, yeah. I learned the importance of, of having a voice and using it properly. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's wild. Cause I think there are moments too, with this, where you feel like maybe you're supposed to overcompensate and go a little bit bigger because it's just your voice and you need it for it to carry, uh, you know, as much as it probably more naturally would, if you could just be there and, you know, physically emote, um, but I think the greatest thing about this and these characters in this film is that it is so authentic and so real um, that it it never felt like, you know, I was doing anything too kooky and weird that felt like unnatural. Um, right. So, yeah. Well, no, if anything, I mean, you guys, you know, to use like the, the watchwords that are apt in this is like you, you guys are able to ground this fantastical story. I mean, let's give a sense of the scale of this. This is. I mean, if you thought the first one was big, this one is, is like six times as big. It's you got six yeah. dimensions, 200 plus characters. And yet it, it's really emotionally powerful. You are so invested mm -hmm. in, you know, for people that don't know, this is the middle section of a trilogy. And it really, it's satisfying on its own, but like 
man, the last half hour is like some of the int- most intense dramatic sure. storytelling. Like I'm on the yeah. edge of my seat. It's really powerful. Um, and it's so passing to me, like, I don't know, five or six years ago, I had never heard the term multiverse. And I feel like there's nothing, like, it's the only thing I hear. Um, right. <laughs> do, you, do you have a handle on the multiverse, Haley? Do you get it? You know, every time I think I do, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask you, it, will you be satisfied? I'm not going to ruin it stuff that we see in this film, but if by the end of this trilogy, your character doesn't interact with a Tom Holland or a Zendaya or an Andrew Garfield or something, would you be satisfied? Would you feel robbed as an actor in the multiverse? If that, if that doesn't happen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta happen. Are you kidding? Yeah. I like, ugh. yeah, yeah. Man. She doesn't write it though. It's out of her, it's out of her hands, but it's okay to say what you want. It's okay. <laughs> Um, how many, how many of the Spider-Men have you encountered in your life? How many do you know? Like of who's played them? Yeah. Obviously, you know, your guy, Shameek. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, do we know and, Toby? I know Toby. You know Toby McGuire? Okay. Um, and Andrew. Andrew Garfield, an acquaintance. Amazing. I have not met Tom. Okay. But I would love to. Maybe, maybe that doesn't happen for a reason, you know? Right. When the time is right. That's just saying. Here's where she gets really cagey. And this is where I should probably should say I've never met Andrew or Toby either. I don't know that, like, I think, like, there's... You might have met them socially at a Vanity Fair well, party, yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah. Yes. But, but, like, maybe there's a... Wow. Pick Let's up go. what I'm putting down and we're just going to stop uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> have you recorded the next one or uh, it sounds like it's going to be iterative as it always is, but have you recorded a lot of the next one already? The next Spider-Verse film? We have been working on this one up until like a, a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> like I, you know, what's crazy is I, you know, before this, uh, I think the, the only thing I could maybe even remotely compare it to are ADR sessions, right? So like right. my job is done. My work is done. Like we're talking live action. Um, we've shot the thing, pictures locked, everything's good set, but we're going back in to just like fix where the planes happen to just not stop flying over us. Um, and it's always been a little tedious, right? Because you feel like you're you're a lot farther removed from it. You know, right. you could be coming in for ADR like quite some time after the fact. Uh, more recently, I have felt like it is a great opportunity to go in and, and better a performance. Um, with this, I've never felt more that way. And I've never felt more inspired by the drive that these filmmakers have to constantly just continue to tweak and fine tune and perfect everything they can, every chance they get. Um, it's mind blowing that, that, you know, I thought that I saw the final thing. That's for sure. It was not done. Like, I can't, like, there were, there are so many things I'm sure right. that like I will now see for the first time when I do, when it is out and done and complete. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, luckily I, I don't feel, <laughs> feel a little bit of it, but I do not feel anywhere near the amount of stress that I know these guys feel just down to the wire, making it yeah. what they, need to, what they need to make so, about it. so not to be greedy but after beyond the spider-verse the, the third in the trilogy is there talk do you want more i mean there, there was talk i think last time i mean gwen is certainly at the center it's not like you're a side you're it's as much your story as miles um but could you imagine fronting the the gwen movie as it were has there been more talk of that or are you happy with where no. you're at i mean not that i not that i've been made aware of i'm completely happy with where i'm at but i would also I would be lying if I said I wouldn't love the opportunity to, to, to go back and dive in even more. Let's talk about another subject you can say nothing about. Uh, let's talk Kate Bishop. Let's get into it. <laughs> Hawkeye. Okay. So um, before we get to the Hawkeye, so Again, in our many conversations, I remember this. I probably pestered you with this. Before you got cast as Kate, um, you had been fan casted a bunch as that character. You'd also been fan casted a lot as Batgirl. 
Did anything uh, ever come? Did anything ever come to that? Did you have a meeting or anything on Batgirl? Was that a real thing or not really? No, not real. Okay, but then when Kate comes around, it seems like you were, as you would be, you're a human being in the world. You were aware, like you saw people talking and connecting it. Do you then, uh, like, as an actor, like go down that rabbit hole, and be like, oh, let's see if there's something there that intrigues me. Oh yeah, of course. You're like, yeah. if, if everybody else is so convinced, <laughs> then I need to see why. Uh, but that was that was a, a yeah. I mean, always so exciting when uh, people genuinely have you in mind for for a character that they love so much. I mean, it's it's um, one thing about the two of these characters is that they are loved by so many um, from around the world and for so long. Uh, so always an exciting thing to to be the one that they have in mind, the fans specifically, um, because this is for them ultimately at the end of the day. Is that is that a top three moment in the career when you get the official offer, no audition required, we want you to be Kate Bishop in the MCU? Oh, uh, I will never forget. I, I, was, I was working on, uh, it must have been season two of Dickinson. And I was pulling up to work and I got the call from my agents and I've never done this, but I literally had to ask the driver. We had just, we had just pulled up. I was like, do you mind getting out of the car for a minute? It just need a minute. And I, and I just thought to myself, like, you know, for the first time I had this realization of each experience is so different than the last. Um, but I had been, you know, with Dickinson, uh, I had been, how do I say this? Uh, I guess just having an experience that I had never had before um, with it being sort of my first time in the TV space, um, executive producing the show. I felt yeah. so involved on so many levels that I had never, ever, ever been before. Um, and then there was this other equally as um, at that moment, what felt like was going to be demand as equally as demanding and 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 large um, as far as scale. Uh, I, I was just like so completely honored and overwhelmed and excited and like part of me just wanted to like go jump on my bed and then like you know maybe take it all in and like fall asleep and then like wake up and then like make sure it wasn't a dream. But I was like yeah. having to go like right into this work day and it was just like the most insane. Yeah, I mean, it's a dream. It's a dream to be considered uh, and to have been later heard here that that Kevin Feige uh, felt that I was I was the one in in mind from from day one. That is like, I don't know what I've done to 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 get here um, or to be that person that pops into someone's mind for something as the perfect person, but um, it's very surreal. Is is part of it? Look, I mean, we all know you have the acting chops, but like also the physicality of a role like that. This part of you, when you get that, like, wait, am I going to be able to do that? Like, am I going to be able to like credibly be mm. an action hero opposite Renner, like opposite all these amazing? You <laughs> know what people. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't so much question it as uh, I do just get That's excited. The job now it's time to yeah. get to work. Yeah, I, I just think like uh, part of part of what I love so much about what I do is that I'm constantly being challenged physically um, to take on a new skill or to, you know, push myself to do something I know I'm capable of, but never probably would have never done it if I wasn't being told I had to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, but I've always wanted to, and I, I, I think that there is a, hopefully another version of this out there for me that I, that I haven't quite, uh, experienced yet, but like, I, I love the idea and, and Kate Bishop was this for me, uh, of, of having to show up for something physically that I will only be able to do and feel confident doing if I put the time in and, and, and train myself to do whatever it is I know I need to do. That's, I mean, that's like some of the greatest stories we hear from actors, you know, what the, yeah. the, the, the shit that they put themselves through to have to, to get to, the place of delivering the kind of performance that they want to, it doesn't, it doesn't come easy. And I mean, this one was so much fun. I mean, I got to, you know, train like, like a maniac. And again, in a way that I, I would not have if I, if I didn't, you know, have this excuse and reason to do it. Um, but that was so much fun. I mean, I, I, I love that about what we do. 
how how anxious are you to get back at it? I mean, look, we got the, such a great story, and we get to see. It was so fun to see you in Florence. Like the energy in that scene's amazing, and I'm sure you're chomping at the bit to do more with her. And particularly, I mean, all like you look at the the latest wave of Marvel heroes. It's like a lot of young women, a lot of like peers that I'm sure you yeah. would be the real. I mean, the Tatiana Maslany's of the world, etc. Um, totally. Where the, hell, where the hell is the Young Avengers, Haley? Like they announce everything. Where's Young Avengers? I mean. The question from you and I both, uh, yeah, it's um, I, I'm I'm certainly chomping at the bit. It's um, it's been a minute since I've. <laughs> it's always so funny because I feel like a few months can go by and I feel like I've been doing nothing. You know what I mean? I'm like, right. I. It's been so long since, and you know, it's been a while since Dickinson ended and since Hawkeye came out. Um, but I I I am so ready to get back at it. I'm so I am like you know itching to be on set again. Um with people that that do what I do and love what we do. And it just, it, I have such a sense of belonging when I'm on set and a sense of home and um, I just love it. And it's, it's, it has been a while. Um, so I, I, I am very much chomping at the bit. Is there one of those particular actors I mentioned or someone I didn't that you're most excited to potentially mix it up with in that realm? Oh man. Oh man, the list is long. Um, all of who you mentioned, uh, the list is long. I've just, I've just started, um, rewatching all Marvel movies in order. So in, in, not in the order. Right. Chronological, not the way they were released, but chronologically correct. or no? Correct. Correct. So where are you um, at? Which, which on Disney plus they, there is both, right? Like you can watch it in the order that they've come out or the order. Um, I, I just started. So just okay. to, Give me a minute. Uh, but it's so, I mean, I, I, all the, all the, you know, everything's coming to mind of what I've just seen and, and, and I'm, I'm jogging my memory for everybody that's come up with me in the last few years. I mean, there's the list is long. So wait, what were you, I'm just curious as a fan, what were you struck by watching those, or those movies that came, have you gotten to like first Avenger yet? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I've, I've seen them. Um, yeah. And I guess it's just that thing of, you know, I know now far more than I did when I saw them the first time, just, just, just as an actor in life, uh, yeah. as a fan of movies, uh, knowing these filmmakers and the actors and whatnot. Um, so it's just a different experience, but it, it's, um, it is so, you know, I, I, this is, uh, this goes back when we were doing, um, some stuff for Hawkeye, uh, I was with, Vera Farmiga, and she was taught, she said this so beautifully, and I think about it often, right, where we talk about being a part of the the, the universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and, and she basically said that, and she was referring to our show specifically, she goes, while we're in this universe, it feels like we're really just on a planet, we're on a small little planet, and it's, it, it, it is very intimate, and it is very, you know, all of these big, huge, wild projects feel like these passion projects. You know, they feel like these, you know, um, <laughs> it feels wild to say, you, you, you're very much aware of the fact that you're making something on a very large scale, but you're doing it with this, this group of people that is just, I mean, so passionate about what it is we're doing that it just feels so intimate in that sense. Um, so I guess going back to, you know, the MCU will always be, this massive thing to, yeah. to me, but going back and, and, and with that sort of thought process, it just feels like, I mean, these movies, they are, they are also, they're just so good and they hold up so well. And um, well, it's, in the, it's I, in the DNA. That's the smartest thing they did from the start was like get passionate people behind the scenes and yeah. then get like Downey and Ruffalo, like the real, like real freaking actors. <laughs> and then the, the thing that like never fails to just, excite me like nothing else is the way that things are so interconnected and yeah. and and I feel like you know with even with um uh across the spider-verse it's like it goes without saying you have to watch these films a minimum of 75 times in order to like get oh, yeah. everything. you know what I mean like it's sensory overload yeah the first time yeah. it's just like let it wash over you I'm not even gonna exactly. try like it's yeah, just yeah 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 like enjoy the music and the feeling yep. and the you know the, the the thunder of it all but then yeah like go back and go in and you'll just you'll get so much from them 
are you anxious? Look, you've sung a, a, a bunch on on camera, like in your film career and TV career, but like we haven't done a full on musical. I don't think I can't recall. Is that mm -hmm. is that on the list? Is that something you must go up for musicals? I would think you're kind of on the list when people are doing <laughs> the musical. I would hope. Um, yeah, I mean, I would, that would be, you know, two of my, my greatest passions and in, in one. Um, so definitely on the list. Yeah. Theater. Am I going to get you here in New York on the stage one of these days? I would love that. I would love to, to do a play. Um, I always love talking to actors after seeing them perform and they're just so alive. And yeah. even, I think it goes back to the, the Fincher conversation we're having of like, really drilling something in and, and, and getting it so right, uh, whatever, whatever that may mean. Um, but I think that sort of repetition and that challenge and the fact that it's live, yeah. um, has to be one of the greatest challenges as an actor. I, I, I would absolutely love to experience that at some point. I mean, I can speak to firsthand. One of the joys of my job is not only talking to you folks over a long period of time, but then like occasionally to do the scripted stuff. And I think the last time we saw each other, I have to say, I rewatched the sketch we oh, did. No. It was for Hawkeye. No, no, Haley, you are so good in that sketch. It's like, oh my top, God. it's one of the, my favorite, like your performance alone. If people have not checked <laughs> it out, we did a sketch for Comedy Central, which it was her mock audition and her comedic timing. <sighs> oh my God. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. As if it needs to be said, but yes, remarkable. So more comedy always for Haley Steinfeld. Um, we're going we're gonna to end with the happy, sad, confused, profoundly random questionnaire. Some random questions for you. You ready? Do it. Uh, what's the wallpaper on your phone? Oh, it's my dog Martini. And I have another one that I, I need to get a picture of the both of them where I think they look cute and both of them look cute in the same pic so that I can do that. Cause I feel, I feel a little, um, uh, like I'm, I'm not cheating on. Wait, they're I two different animals. They're two. Wait, they're two animals. Two, two different, two dogs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I just, I just have one as my background. And then on my like, you know, home screen. So she's my lock screen, and then my home screen, uh, is just this cool graphic that says, um, your energy, your energy introduces you before you even walk in the room, uh, or before before you even speak. That's right. what it is. Your energy introduces you before you even speak, which I love. Good reminder. Yeah. Um, okay. Last actor you were mistaken for? Huh. Have you signed any autographs for someone that is not yourself? A picture presents. Yeah, I'll sign it. It's okay. Uh, no, but there is a, there is a still from just to take it back one more time. <laughs> regret. Uh, where it is so clearly my stunt double and Jeff Bridges and not me. And I get that a lot to sign. It's not me in the photo, but uh, like, and I sign it because why not, yeah. right? It's like a 45 year old woman. You're like, nope, that was the stunt double. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what, if you were going to host the podcast, what would the topic be? Oh, wow. I love this question. Um, wow. What would the topic be? Yeah, what can you go on and on? What would you want to explore? What do you want to riff on for 10 hours? I'm green lighting your podcast today. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, maybe holy, this, this, this might require more thought. Um, <laughs> uh, wow. Oh, my God. Give me a second. Um, That's okay. So many things have come to my mind. You know what I think would be interesting? Well, two things. And I guess I could kind of do them both at the same time. This 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 might be, I'm gonna think of of one topic, okay? But I I I've thought about this often because I feel like I I have worked with so many interesting people who have just had so many life experiences that that like only that person would ever have um and i feel lucky enough to know about them i would love to if, if i were to have a podcast i would love for it to just sort of like this josh i mean i like and and like you mentioned when we started we've been talking for so many years now like there's there's a um you've created a space uh that feels comfortable and and safe which is so cool because you know, these, these things can be weird and you, you know, you're talking about things that you have to be talking about. And then like, it's nice to, it's nice to 
talk shop and and get into you know we have we have a lot of common interests and we we've yeah. known that because we've been talking for so long and and you know we're we're in this world for a reason but I would love to have a space in which people feel like they could come and 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 talk about life experiences that they've had that that may connect to a reason why we love them or right. why or how we know them uh, but that we would just never know if if we weren't in an intimate unless we were in an intimate conversation with them. Um, I also think it would be so fun. And this sort of might be similar to what you're doing right now, but to have like, and I guess this would fall under the coming up with a more specific topic, but like, if you asked every person, the same five questions, right. Um, that again, you're bound to get a different answer to every time because of that person and their life experience. But I, I, I am going to think about, let me know. I will produce I will. because your initial idea is basically putting me out of a job. Just so you know, no! you're like, I'm going to do you, but better horror. No, 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 no. <laughs> no not it. I promise to let you go in a second. We're almost done. Um, biggest. Okay. Name drop for a second for me. You get a, you get a text from a certain celebrity. What's who still boggles your mind? Like I, I know this person and they're just, they just appeared on my phone. How is this possible? Okay. This is pretty. And I, I was thinking about this earlier because the last time I saw this person was in, in New York City. Um, Woody Harrelson. Edge of 17, that, co-star, amazing. I mean, but like, like, here's the thing, okay? You do these things, you do these projects. If you're lucky enough to walk away with some friendships, which I have, uh, it's 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 rare that you actually keep in touch with people. Everybody's yeah. on, a, on a moving train and, and in their yeah. own, you know, doing their thing and whatnot. And, uh, we have, we have kept in touch, uh, over the years and, um, it's always so fun to hear from him and he's always up to something crazy. Okay. Like this guy is like, <laughs> Woody Harrelson like, crazy. What? I mean, I, who would have thought, but anyway, <laughs> he's just like, we're doing like a, 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 a bike tour through Asia. Like, you know, we're just kind of, you know, who God knows what, but I always love checking in with him, um, every now and again, cause I always get something, something like that back. But he, he, that to me is always like, Oh, I got an email from Woody. <laughs> yeah. He is a light in the universe. Okay. Happy, sad, confused actor that always makes you happy. You see them on screen. You're in a good mood. <clears throat> wow. Oh my God. Uh, maybe let's say. Julia Roberts. This is the correct answer, of course. Yes, that is a correct answer. Correct answer. <laughs> Movie that makes you sad, always. Breaks you down. Oh, my God. Um, um, movie that always makes me sad. It's the most you've cried at a movie. What's the one that's sure to elicit tears? You have no, you have no heart. You have no soul. You don't cry. <laughs> um, yeah. Imagine I name like the the most happy movie. That's the one that like makes me the most sad. Um, dang. Uh, okay. Can you come back to this one? Yeah. Okay. I got one more for you, and then we'll come back. Food we'll that makes back. you food that makes you confused. A what? A food that makes you confused. What's the food? You're like, what the what what's up with that food? That's stupid. I don't get it. What's all the hollow blue about? I never Oof. said these I never said they would be easy, Haley. We were finishing with the with <laughs> Okay. Foods, foods that confuse me. Um, you see it on a menu. I don't get it. Why would I want that? I hate that. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of people that disagree with me. Okay. But a big potato. <laughs> I don't get it. Whoa. I like most what? forms of potatoes. A big potato? I, it's I don't. kind of blah. It's about what you put in the potato, what you do to the potato. No, but even at that, like dip a french fry in something. Like like yeah. why do you fry it up, it? coat it in something? Yeah, I got I I hear you. A baked potato? Also beets. I hate beets. I hate beets. I hate beets. Why why are beets? <laughs> You oh, know? you're canceled. You're canceled. Haley Steinfeld hates beats. The beat lobby is coming after you. <laughs> Although I, 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 I met um, Jamie Oliver recently and he, I, I said that I didn't like beats and he's like, I will get you to love them. So maybe there's a world in which I frowned, but. Oh, okay. 
All right, last one. We're, we're, we're done. Movie that makes you sad. Okay. Movie that last makes time, me sad. Last time you cried at a movie. Have you never cried at a movie? I'm worried about oh, you. Oh, I, but I cry in every movie. That's the problem. Every... It's too much. Okay. Yeah. I, Step I, Brothers I, I, makes you cry. Yeah. Step Brothers makes me weep. Um, <laughs> I mean. I'm trying to think of one that like maybe I saw recently that, oh, come on. Um, This is what we call press door brain. This is what happens to the, the, the most, the quickest yeah. actors. It breaks them down. This is a PSA for actors. Don't go on a worldwide press tour. Oh, what about, um, um, uh, uh, you got it. It's uh, here. We got it. Brooks. Um, oh my God, you guys. Oh my God. You guys, I just got hot. I can't. <laughs> We're not What's ending this. On? It can, yeah. if it takes an hour, I have nowhere to be Haley. Okay, good. Um, Oh my God, why can't I think of the Nick? Can I like, I, like give I me an actor? Say. Google Hold on. what you got? We got the internet at your fingertips. Terms of endearment. That's what it is. I said, <laughs> this, is a, this is another correct answer. Yes, Thank you. I watched Terms of Endearment on a plane once and I was a, a puddle. Idea. it was a horrible Bad idea. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You know, I was just talking recently about how when I was younger and I would fly a lot, that was like I would watch. I would never sleep. I would only watch movies. It was like the time for me to like watch movies. And I loved it. Now, as I get older, I, I'm out no. before that thing takes off. But um, <laughs> I would always go for the sad movie on a plane. Why, yeah. Don't It's do a rookie mistake. <laughs> yeah. That theme, the theme in, in terms of endearment, and they use it so much. They almost use it too much, but they know it works every oh. single time. It kicks in. <laughs> 100%. We got there. We did it. We it did. was just, it was a struggle. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie to you. It was a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to lie to you. That was, that was real. <laughs> All right. Take a nap. Rest up. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It, it's always good to catch up. And especially for a cause like this. I mean, honestly, you know, I talk about a lot of blockbusters, but this one, it, it kicks ass. It's so good. It's emotional. It's thrilling. Uh, and just a thousand people help make this come together. Like give them props. Like this is a quite an undertaking. So, um, so congratulations, Haley. I'll see you soon. And uh, next time in person, hopefully. Hopefully. Thank you so much, Josh. Good to see you. And so ends another edition of Happy, Sad, Confused. Remember to review, rate and subscribe to this show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm a big podcast person. I'm Daisy Ridley and I definitely wasn't pressured to do this by Josh. 